Hello everybody, it's Tone Binder, and in this tutorial video I'm going to be showing you some ways to implement sound design in your Ancient Warfare maps. I really believe this is an important part of making Ancient Warfare 3 experiences, so let's get right into it. Alright, so we're going to start out with some very important parts of sound design, and this is going to be uh, having sound effects play when you open doors and press buttons. So it should be a fairly straightforward concept here, uh, and in fact, the, the game engine itself is, is pretty compatible for this kind of stuff, so we're just going to get a door frame here, and uh, nothing too fancy at all. We're just going to add a door right here, and maybe put a wall. Put some walls around it, but after that, we can script in a few things to have some sounds play. And yeah, it should be just should be pretty good. Should be pretty easy. So as you can see here, we just have a door. Uh, nothing too fancy about it. We're going to leave it as uh, we'll leave it as unlocked here. And I'm going to store a script in the global scripts here, and. This script is going to be what allows me to play any sound effects. So we'll just do a door opened. Every time the door is opened, this particular door, play sound. And we'll do it, I think, just this way. And we can get any sound we want here. Um, I think we're going to go with a game sound for the door being opened. And we'll just find one that I think would be pretty cool to use. I'll be back. So ideally you're going, to want, you're going to want to have a door opening sound effect playing for this. So I'm going to get one right now. We're just going to get a sound that is uh, licensed in the Creative Commons Zero license. And I'm going to be using a program called Audacity to convert it into a OGG file, which is the type of file accepted by Ancient Warfare 3. And there are plenty of different websites you can use to get your sound effects, and I'll be linking quite a few of them in the description if you'd like to use them for your own projects. You have to make sure that you store your files somewhere in the C drive, otherwise uh, you won't be able to put them in the game. And now we have our pressure door sound effect. Here it is. The volume we're simply going to set at 1, and the volume here goes from 0 to 1, with 0 being absolutely silent and 1 being regular volume. Range will be 15, and that'll be how far out the, uh, the sound will play at, and if the player is too far away, obviously they won't be able to hear it. So. This position here is just where the sound originates from. That's kind of the center where the 15 goes from. We will have it originate from the door itself. Now let's place down a player and test out this script. So this is a very simple concept which, which we're going to be able to replicate pretty easily using buttons and switches. And I will show you how to do that now for a little more complicated uh, mechanism. So we're going to get rid of this connection here. The sound will play when the door is opened. Actually, you know what? We can actually keep it exactly how it is because we're going to use scripts to open this door. We're going to set it as locked, first of all, and tie this to a uh, uh, reader, a card reader, like this. And we'll put it here just because it's a little bit easier to do it that way. And a uh, table next to it. And on here will be the key card that we need. It'll be a nice blue key card. It will be one use. And we will call it access key. We want to tie it to this key uh, key card reader. You don't have to tie it to that door. You tie it to the reader. And all you have to do is a little bit of scripting. And uh, these two uh, things, the, key, the card reader and the door, will be hooked up to each other. So here we go. Back into that same global script here. Uh, we're going to leave this how it is. We'll also do an unlocked. Um, Okay, now quite simply, we're going to move out of this script. We're going to call it door. We'll create a second one called card reader. The reason we're going to do this is because it just is a little bit easier for me to use a prefabbed script. So let's find it here. One time. That's what we want. And rather than using trigger enter, we're going to adapt this slightly. We're going to use an update node, which means that after the battle starts, we are going to be constantly checking to see if this card reader here is unlocked. So we're going to get is locked right now and uh, referencing of course that card reader which will be locked by default but when it becomes unlocked it's going to play a single sound and open the door. So let's get an if node here. We All we have to do is tie the get is locked to the if node and if it is truly 
uh, if it's truly not locked, I should say, so we want to connect this to the false. If it's not locked, that indicates that it's been unlocked by the keycard. So nothing happens if it is locked, but if it is not locked, then we do this. And we're just going to do the simple one-time script here, so essentially we have a bool variable that um, allows a script to happen only one time, and uh, we only want it to play this unlocking sound once. So. We're going to get another play, but instead of doing the play sound, we're going to do a play 2D sound because I'm going to show you the difference between play and play 2D. You can obviously see there are a lot uh, fewer inputs in this node, and that's because the only thing you can control here is the volume, and that is because this uh, sound will always play as if it's right at your position. So it won't be originating from somewhere, it'll just be uh, everywhere at once, sort of in the background. I'm gonna set the float to one here and get ourselves a nice, like a nice button press sound for this for this key cut. This is from Half Life. I got it from the Rise of the Yellow campaign. So we're just gonna grab that and have it play it only once the first time this key card reader has been unlocked. So we should be pretty good. And we'll also script it so that the card reader will open the door and unlock it this first time. So here we go. Set is locked and the door counts as a lock as well. So, let's get rid of this here. We're just going to have it set the door to be unlocked and open the first time this keycard reader is unlocked. Next up, I'm going to make some very simple uh, combat, battlefield, ambience playing the background. We're going to use a 2D node, but you can use anything for this. If you want it to feel a little bit more organic, you can have it originate from a certain origin point on the map. But I, I do sometimes find that, that can sometimes end up sounding unnatural. If you uh, put too many barriers between yourself and the sound, it'll cut off suddenly, something along those lines. But most of the time, uh, if you don't use a 2D node, it should end up just fine. Anyway, we're going to get another modern door here, and this is going to be kind of the exit door, and once I leave that, we're going to start hearing the sounds of gunfire and explosions. So, trigger enter, we're going to do a one-time script just like we did there, and instead of having a button sound play, we're going to have some battlefield ambience play, with some play 2D. You can even get play 2DX if you want the sound itself to become a possible input for something else. And you're going to want to do this if you want to stop the sound source at any point. So I will show you what I mean by that. First of all, let's get this sound in here. And we'll also script it to end that sound if I decide, for whatever reason, to re-enter the building. So we'll put a second trigger in there, and here we'll see what we'll do. Trigger enter on this trigger being entered, we will stop that sound source. We simply have to drag this input here, and I'll move this over here so it makes a little more sense. Basically, when you re-enter the building, it's just going to stop that sound. I'll show you how this all looks put together, and hit play. And of course, it's very easy to have this work all the time. I'll show you what I mean. You just have to get rid of this one-time thing, and the whole circuit should work as intended, creating a sort of consistent background sound of uh, battle ambience, essentially. You can also have sounds play when you pick up equipment, um, when you kill an enemy, 
uh, all that kind of stuff. Uh, I'll list the full number of possibilities up on screen, but there's quite a wide range of things if you want to have musical cues and stuff like that. So I'll also have some music kick in once I start leaving this area to indicate that I am a boss and I am going off to do heroic things. There's the path that I must follow. But will I follow it? Who can say? Okay, uh, let's make ourselves a trigger and this will be where the musical cue kicks in. This time we definitely do want a one-time script and I strongly recommend everybody who watches my videos and, are interested in, and who is interested in scripting to uh, create your own analog of this script because it is extremely useful to have just a prefabbed version of a one-use script. So make something like this and it will allow you to have things happen a single time without having to repeat. Okay, all we have to do now is simply get a Play 2DX is what I usually use for music. Get ourselves some sound. And now let's hear how it sounds all put together. All right, everybody, well, that was just a basic introduction to sound design in Ancient Warfare 3. It's something that I am, would love to see more of uh, on the workshop. So um, I hope that this proved helpful to you. And if you have any specific questions related to this topic, please feel free to leave a comment down below, and I will respond as quickly as I can. And if you want to support my videos, you can always leave a like and subscribe, or follow my Steam Workshop, which is always linked in the description of my content. So thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.